Hello everyone, my name is Rebecca. Let's talk about makeup. So it is April and I figured it might be a good time for me to update you on how I'm doing with my 24 in 24, which are the 24 products that I am hoping to completely finish by the end of the year. Now, if you have watched any of my panning content to this point, you know that most of my panning goals are usage goals. That's for a couple of reasons. I have a decently sized collection and my goal is to use all of it. Not only that, I have a very short attention span when it comes to makeup. I get bored easily and I really, really crave variety in my daily makeup use. So the idea of trying to pan things completely <laughs> by just using them every day until they're gone kind of makes me want to die a little bit inside. <laughs> At the same time, I do have a number of products in my collection that I would really like to completely finish. And I'd like to get that done by the end of the year. So when I was thinking about updating you on my 24 and 24 goal, I went back to my previous video where I introduced my 24 and 24, or at least I tried to. Apparently, while I filmed this video in January, I didn't actually uh, upload it. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> I have no idea what happened between the filming of it and the actual uploading process, but it didn't actually happen. I didn't even edit the thing. I found the footage from the video on my camera, but I never uploaded it. So this is going to be an intro to my 2024 as well as an update so I can let you know how I'm doing with these goals. A lot of these products already have a decent amount of use on them. As I explained in the video I never actually posted, I have a little bit of a psychological barrier when it comes to finishing products. I have noticed that I tend to, as soon as I notice that I'm starting to run low on a particular product, especially if I really enjoy it, I will subconsciously start to use it less out of some sort of saver mentality. I don't know what I'm saving it for. I'm just saving it to throw away eventually because that's what's going to happen. So in December, I collected a decent number of these products that I had used quite a bit, but that I was having a hard time getting myself to complete. And I was going to use this 24 and 24 goal to kind of give myself the impetus to get over whatever psychological block I have when it comes to completing products and to actually finish these products. And I, I, I've made some decent progress into these. Now, the experienced panners among you are going to see these products and you're really going to consider these very easy gimme products. But the purpose here isn't that there's a whole lot of product to complete. The purpose here is <laughs> I'm really struggling with the actual completion part. So I'm going to show you what products I have in this project that I have already completed, the ones that I feel like I'm very close to completion and the ones that I have not yet started to focus on. Then I have what I am considering my stretch goals. And depending on how quickly we get through this first 24, um, I will tell you what my stretch goals are. Basically, the stretch goals are once I start to roll out any of these, I'm going to roll all 24 of these in at once. Also, quick note, I'm not really treating this as a separate project. I haven't taken photos or weighed things. What I'm doing is using this kind of as a statement of intent, and then I'm trying to use it as the pool from which to draw first when I'm choosing products for other projects, if that makes sense. So I'm not really planning regular updates for this. I'm not really tracking my progress in this as a separate project. I'm just sort of using this as a pool to draw from, if that makes sense. So let's talk about the things that I have already managed to finish. The first item here is a recent empty. This is my Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream in shade number 23, which is pretty much a spot on dupe for my skin in the wintertime. Spot on dupe. <laughs> it's a spot on match for my skin in the wintertime. This BB Cream is lovely. It's hydrating, has good coverage, has enough gray in this particular shade that really is flattering for my very muted skin tone in the winter time. Uh, my summer color is a little bit too deep to use this, um, but this is just pretty much perfect in the winter time. It's hydrating, it's lightweight. I just, I freaking love this thing. It's also very, very useful as a mix-in type product so that I can mix it into some of my more full coverage, uh, more matte foundations to kind of like loosen them up a little bit, give them a little bit more life. 
and emollients without really compromising the coverage all that much. So really, really love this BB cream. I would repurchase it if I was not the proud owner of more than 30 foundations at this point. I'm very, very proud of myself for having completed a base product this year. The next two things I have to show you are both setting spray facial mist type situations. These are these are more finishing sprays, really is what they are. This is the Sephora Perfection Mist Nude Glow. This is glass skin in a can is what this is. It felt, feels very much like a dry oil. I used to be very much more into the glass skin type look than I am these days. And that's when I purchased this. Even when I was really, really into much more luminous makeup, this was a lot. Listen, I have combo oily skin. In the summertime, it is just oily, oily. And this this was just really, really a lot for me. Uh, so it took me a long time to get through it. I don't even think Sephora makes this product anymore, but she is finished and I am proud of that. Along similar lines is the Milani Make It Last Dewy setting spray. Obviously, this is another holdover from when I was much more into that look than I am currently. And because I fell out of love with that super hyper dewy glowy look, uh, it was really difficult for me to get through the last little bits of this, but I finally did finish it. I also finished this one. This is the NYX Fill and Fluff uh, in the shade Black. This is one of those triangular pencils. When I featured this in my empties, I complained to you a lot about the shape of this thing. I'm, I don't love it. And the fact that I prefer to use black in my eyebrows, this was just too creamy. This is very much a pomade in a pencil, which is not what I'm looking for. I'm not adding color to the entirety of my brow. I'm just filling in certain spots, kind of darkening up the tail, adding a little bit here at the top corner. However, if you are into the ombre brow and if you like a pomade in a pencil, this little toothbrush situation has on the end, uh, I prefer a spoolie for the way I do my eyebrows, but if you're into that really faded ombre brow, this is a pretty good tool for making that happen. So I didn't love it, but it is done and I am glad. Now, this is one half of a product. So basically, this is my Rimmel Exaggerate Waterproof Eye Definer. It is one half of a product that I am intending to finish by the end of the year. The other one is a NYX uh, retractable pencil in the shade brown. So very much along these same lines, but I, there was so little left in this little pencil when I brought it into the project. I will see if I can find some footage for you of how much this had in it. Um, I might be able to go back to that previous video I filmed and grab a screen cap of how much was in this initially. There was so little left in this one that I wanted to con consider both of those products a single product. So I'm halfway there. I'm halfway there with that one. So that makes one, two, three, four, four out of my 24 and 24. We're, we're making a good start. That's a good start. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's talk about the other products that I have here that I feel like I'm getting close to being done with. First, I think this is the one I'm the closest with, and this is my It Cosmetics CC Cream in the shade Light. This is my second tube of it. I've had it around for a while. You can tell by the... <laughs> how much of a the label has rubbed off. I used it down to about here and then I stopped using it because I really do enjoy this product and I didn't want to use it up, but uh, we're getting to that place where it needs to go. Obviously, obviously it needs to go <laughs> and we're getting close. We're almost there. I really, really enjoy this CC cream. I It has really good coverage. It's very comfortable on the skin. I feel like this is something I can wear even during the summertime when my oil production is like in overdrive, I will absolutely get shiny with this, but somehow it's a pretty kind of shiny. It reminds me of the Stila Hide and Chic in that way. They're wildly different formulas, wildly different formulas, but they both have that same effect where I feel I can, I can wear them in the summertime. And even though I do get quite, quite luminous, um, it's, it's a pretty luminous. So I really do enjoy this. After having gone through the Misha BB cream, uh, which I purchased after purchasing this one, I, I think they do the same thing for me, but I think the Misha does it a little bit better. I think it's a little bit more lightweight on the skin. This one can be heavy if you're not careful with how you apply it. My preferred way to apply it is with my fingers. I know a lot of people hate that, but I felt that was the way that I got the most lightweight, sheer, but, um, a flattering uh, coverage with this particular 
product. The Misha, it doesn't matter how I apply the Misha. It never feels heavy on the skin. I just feel like the Misha might be just a slightly better product. The color is way better for me. I could just, the color match is just not right. Obviously it cosmetics, uh, shade ranges are just atrocious. The Demisha definitely matches me better at this point in my life. I don't mind having to mix. This is definitely something I have to mix the Misha in the winter time. I can get away with not mixing it, which is lovely as well. So I feel like the Misha does it better. And the Misha is so much, so much less expensive. I can't see myself buying another tube of this, but I did enjoy it. Now, I'm not sure which one I'm going to finish first, that one or this one. Um, this is my L'Oreal Magic Lumi Light Infusing Primer. This was a primer along the lines of the Becca Backlight Priming Filter, except for I think this one came out prior to that. If you recognize the bottle of this, you know that this, she's pretty old. It's time for her to leave my collection. This is not a product that I feel like it can wear on my own, which is a little bit of a ding against it because the e.l.f. Halo Glow is something I can wear on, on its own or with just a little bit of concealer. And I feel like that just, I do feel like after applying this onto my skin, I feel a little metallic. I feel like I do need something over it. So not my favorite product. And so it has taken me quite a while to get through it. We're about right here. I'm not sure how much product that actually translates. I'm not sure where the actual bottom of the bottle is, but I think we're pretty close to being done with this one. Here's one that I really love that I feel like I'm very close to finishing and it's both uh, happy and sad for me. <laughs> and that is the Danessa Myrick's uh, Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder in the shade Universal. I did try to coverage versions of these products, but I just couldn't get it to sit right on my skin. It just never looked flattering on my skin. It emphasized the texture on my face. It just sat strangely on me and it didn't stay put the way I wanted it to. It felt a little slippy. However, the Universal translucent version of this has become my holy grail primer for the summertime. This combined with another product I'm gonna show you in just a minute have been the most successful combo in controlling oil for me that I have ever found. So I started using this less last year when I saw that I was starting to run out and I don't want, I, I wanna use all of it. I wanna use all of it. And so I'm going to really push myself this summer. It's a little bit too heavy duty for me in the winter time, especially here in this drier climate that I'm living in. So in the winter time, I do tend to get a little bit drier. So I haven't been using this through the winter, but as the, the weather has started to warm up, I've started reaching for this again. And I will show you, uh, if I can grab a screen cap of how it was looking before and how it's looking now, I will show you the progress that I've had since the beginning of the year. Love this product. Beautiful product. If you have oily skin, I highly recommend that you try that out. It is a lovely primer for oily skin. So the other half of that combo that I've really enjoyed is this. This is the Honest Beauty uh, Invisible Blurring Loose Powder. This thing is just, this is the most mattifying powder that I have ever found. It's not a really cakey, gross looking matte. It's just a matte. It's, it's matte. This is a T-zone only powder for me, and it is a summertime T-zone only powder for me. But if you have oily skin, you know the struggle. You powder your skin half an hour later. It's like you didn't. You know what I'm saying? If you want a powder that's going to keep you matte for a significant period of time without looking heavy and gross on your skin, give this one a try. This one in combination with the Danessa Myricks, this is my summertime go-to when I want that T-zone to stay matte. There are certain parts of the year, like the hottest part of the summer season, I tend to just lean into the, the dewy look because there's just nothing I can do that will stop me from getting shine breakthrough. But in those situations where I really do want to stay matte for as long as possible, great combination. This is where we're at with the powder. I'm getting down there. I really am. Um, it has one of those net, I'll show you. Some people love these, some people don't. I really do enjoy this type of a sifter. Um, it keeps it from being terribly messy. I'm getting to the point where it's low enough in the jar that I'm having trouble accessing it through the sifter. So there may be a point where I'm going to have to decant this into something else. But so far we're making good progress on it from the beginning of the year. I have used it. I don't use it a ton during the winter time just because I don't feel like I need as much help staying matte um, because my skin is a little bit drier. 
but I will use it sometimes for filming videos just because I've noticed on camera, uh, slightly dewy skin uh, reads as way shinier than it looks in real life. So this is helpful for that. But as we move into the warmer months, I'm gonna get a lot more use out of this. Another coverage project product that I really believe I'm gonna be able to finish by the end of the year, hopefully. I think I'm gonna be able to finish by the end of the year. This is my Purito BB Cream. Uh, this is the Snail Clearing BB Cream. I have the shade uh, 27 Sand Beige, which is a better depth for me in the summertime. And I have the 23 Natural Beige, which is pretty spot on for me during the winter. The rest of the time, I kind of mix the two. This is a really, really, really good BB cream. Now, if you know anything about this particular BB cream, because it was pretty popular several years ago, if you know anything about this, you know how old this is because they have since reformulated this particular BB cream into, I think the Sika Clearing BB cream is what Purito is, is uh, producing now. And this is no more and hasn't been for a while. So she needs to leave. <laughs> I love using this the way I like using the Misha BB cream. They are very interchangeable for me. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to repurchase this or repurchase the Misha because I do feel like they serve the same purpose in my collection. They are lightweight, easy, good coverage, hydrating. Obviously they don't do anything to control oil, but I do enjoy them in the summertime simply because they feel so lightweight on the skin. So when it's really, really hot and I don't want to feel suffocated by my makeup, this is a good one to wear. They've got this much left here and there's actually a fair amount of of air in this one. So, but we're getting down to the wire on both of them. For the purposes of this project, I am going to consider these both the sing a single product, similarly to the eyeliners I referred to earlier in the video and because there's so little left. And so I am hoping to have both of these tubes of the BB cream completed by the end of the year. Here's another primer that I am trying to use up. This is the Milani Soft Focus Glow. This is not terribly old in my collection, but I do want to get it out simply because it has limited usefulness to me. I uh, This is in the shade 02 Golden Glow. In my inventory series, uh, I talked a little bit about why I don't love this on my face. It's just very thick. This is very thick and it's very peachy. It's very peachy kind of orange. I don't love having this thick a layer of product on my skin. It's not something that I really enjoy wearing on its own. I feel like it just adds a lot of thickness to the product on my skin where when I wear it underneath the foundation, I don't love it. So how I have been using this is I have been using it on my body. And for that purpose, it's fine. It's fine. It's not a holy grail body highlighter or anything like that, but that's how we're using it up. And I'm hopefully we'll be able to get through it this summer. The next one is a little deluxe size of the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. This is a lovely product. I have to admit that this is a beautiful, beautiful product. It really is. It is really nice as a highlighter, an all around skin perfecter. This is definitely one of those things that I could wear on its own and it just adds a little something. I can wear it with just a little bit of concealer and I feel like that gives my complexion just a little bit of polish. However, since purchasing this one, I tried the e.l.f. Halo Glow and the e.l.f. Halo Glow is simply my favorite for any of those purposes. I think it's superior to the Charlotte Tilbury. So whenever I'm going for that, that's what I want to reach for. At the same time, I've got about half of this product left and I don't want it to go to waste. I paid 20 bucks for this little thing. So it is a really nice product and I do enjoy it. I just have something I enjoy more. So I'd like to use this up and get it out of my collection so I don't have to worry about it going bad in my drawer. So hoping to finish that one up by the end of the year as well. I don't know why I keep saying that. I'm hoping to finish all of these by the end of the year. <laughs> Here's another primer. Actually, I have a couple more primers, but what the, the heck happened to the other one? Hold please, found it. Okay, here are two more primers that I would like to finish by the end of the year. We're being ambitious. The first is, this is the Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer. This is their gripper, gripping primer that's very similar to the Milk Hydro Grip or the Cover Effects Gripping Primer or the e.l.f. gripping primer. Although I haven't tried that one. I've heard that one was wonderful. I really, really enjoy this one. This is a really good one. Having tried the Milk Hydro Grip, I feel like this is very similar. And to be perfectly honest, I can't, I can't tell you that there's a huge difference. This does a really good job of hanging onto your makeup. 
And this is the Rimmel Stay Matte Mattifying Makeup Primer. This is a really, really good uh, mattifying primer. This is my second tube of this. This was absolutely my holy grail go-to before I discovered the Danessa Myricks Blurring Balm. I do feel like the Danessa Myricks does a better job of keeping my skin matte and being very lightweight on the skin. This is still a really, really good primer. I do find that it can be a little bit finicky sometimes depending on what you put underneath it. It can pill a little bit, but I actually found that very manageable as long as I didn't put too much on. This is a really, really decent mattifying primer. It is from the drugstore. It is very affordable. If you don't want to shell out as much money as you will need to for the Danessa Myricks, this is definitely a reasonable alternative. So hopefully I will be able to get through both of these this summer. I have a couple of blushes that I'm hoping to get through. One of them you've already seen if you have followed my color pan project pan. This is one I am working on for that project. This is my ColourPop Drop of a Hat Super Shock Blush. This is what she's looking like. I'll see if I can get a screen cap of what she was looking like earlier in the year. We're making good progress on her. This is one of my favorite blushes ever. It's a beautiful formula. She's got just a really pretty, peachy, rosy, gold reflect in there. Just oh, such a pretty blush. This is, I've been wearing this more than any other blush in my collection this year. And I'm really, really hoping we'll be able to use her up. It's one of my favorites. It is definitely one of those products that I started to use less once I hit Pam because I love it so much. And for a good while, I was under the impression that this was a limited edition shade. Apparently this is the limited edition packaging, but the shade still exists in their permanent line. So that made me feel a lot better about continuing to use this. And it's a super shock, so it's not gonna last forever. So hopefully I'll be able to get through that one. The second blush I would like to get through is my, well, this is not a rare beauty blush. This is a ripoff of a rare beauty blush that I bought off of Amazon for about $6, I think. This is the Dan Visit uh, blush in cool pink. I think it's number two cold, cool pink. Um, I do not terribly mind this packaging ripoff simply because of the way that uh, it was designed to be more easily opened by people with dexterity issues and arthritis and that sort of thing, which I think is fabulous. I wish everybody would rip this off. I love seeing innovation in cosmetics companies that makes the cosmetics more accessible to more people. Love that. So that didn't bother me. You may feel differently, but this blush is so nice. It is so nice. You can already see I have some windowing here. And as soon as that windowing happened, happened, I don't know what is wrong with my brain. As soon as I started to see that windowing happening, I started using it less and less. And I've actually hardly used it at all this year. I have been kind of trying to focus a lot on this blush here, but I'm really hoping I will be able to get both of them finished by the end of the year. This is just a really, really pretty blush. It's beautiful for $7. I don't know. I haven't, I still haven't pulled the trigger on a rare beauty blush because I feel like I don't need to. Um, really, really enjoyed this blush. It has a good amount of pigmentation, but it's not crazy. I don't feel like it is a formula dupe from the Rare Beauty from what I've heard of Rare Beauty. Again, I have not used Rare Beauty's blushes, but I have heard they're significantly more pigmented. I can usually get away with a couple of dots on this on each cheek. Really pretty, love this shade. Beautiful formula, long wearing, blends in like a dream. I can put it over powder, gorgeous. Next, I have another product that I really, really love, but I need to finish it. And it's not terribly old either. I got it last summer, but I need to finish it pronto because the packaging has failed. This is my Milani Silky Matte Bronzer in the shade 02 Sun Kissed. I love this shade. First of all, the formula is lovely. I love this shade because it has a little bit of rosiness to it. And I find that to be very flattering on my particular skin tone. However, this is what happened. This type of packaging, it always, this always happens. I just, and as soon as this happens, I know something's going to happen to it. You know, it's going to get dinged. It's going to get scratched. I can no longer put it in my, my makeup bag. Um, at some point this is going to shatter. 
I'm just waiting for that to happen. But I would love to be able to use it to completion before that occurs. In the, I've had this, I've had this happen to me in the past, and inevitably uh, something will happen to the powder. It will shatter. I, I don't love repressing things. I find it incredibly annoying, so I usually don't do it. With this one, when it breaks, I definitely will repress it because I am committed to using the whole thing by the end of the year. So uh, this is where we're at now. I'll see if I can get a screen cap to show you where it started. But yeah, working on that one. Next, I have a uh, concealer that uh, I have been working on this consistently for over a year now. And I, <laughs> she's still going strong. I don't know how much product is in here. I don't know whether or not it's reasonable to expect that I might be able to finish it by the end of the year. But I have been using this. I've used this more days than I haven't over the last year, 14 months, 15 months. Can't remember exactly when I bought it, but this is a beautiful concealer. It is, as of now, my favorite concealer that I have ever used. This is the Huda Beauty Full Filter Concealer. It is in the shade 2.7N Coconut Flakes. This is a really nice shade for me for most of the year during uh, so the summer when I'm at my deepest, it does become a little more highlighty than I prefer from a concealer, but it's just a, such a pretty, pretty concealer. It never looks heavy. It never looks cakey. It never gathers weirdly in odd places. Really love this concealer. I have used the heck out of this concealer and I, I don't know, it, there is no way for me to tell where I'm at with it. It is a completely opaque packaging. I have no clue where I'm at, but I love the idea of being able to finish concealer probably for the first time in my life. I would love to be able to do that. I, to be perfectly honest, I never really liked concealer. It never looked right on me. It always looked weird and kind of grainy underneath the eyes. I don't know if you, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but it looked a little, it would look textury under my eyes, even when I was much younger and had fewer fine lines under there. I just could never get it to look right. This is the first concealer that I have ever truly loved, and I would love to be able to complete it. A few lip products here. I have got two lip glosses. These are from ColourPop. I've had this one perpetually in my lip service project and I just rolled this one into my lip service project as well. This is Champagne Mommy. I have been working on this one pretty consistently since uh, February. And I have some progress pictures for that one as well. And then this one is in Flying Horses. I just recently rolled this into my lip service project, but we have the level is right about here and I am confident that we'll be able to finish the both of these by the end of the year despite the fact <laughs> it just broke my lip gloss low by with a new buxom gloss but I'm determined that I will finish these by the end of the year I have also have a lipstick that I am working on this is my MAC Viva Glam 6 this is my favorite lipstick in all of creation she unfortunately broke last month but I have been working on her in my lip service project and I have gotten quite a lot of progress on her I will see if I can get another screen cap so you can see where she started I'm thinking about melting this one down Actually, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with her. I might just continue to go, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm determined that I'm going to use her up. I don't know if I'm going to go digging into the bottom of the tube. The reason why I am in a hurry to finish this one up is because she started to lose her vanilla scent. And those of you who have gone through MAC lipsticks know as soon as that smell starts to go, she's on her last legs. And I, it would be heartbreaking to have my favorite lipstick of all time. This is my second tube of this. I have already gone through an entire tube of this lipstick. It would be devastating for me to let my own favorite lipstick go bad in my collection. I can't do it. I can't have it. Okay. So one way or another, we are finishing this by the end of the year. I am also trying to finish my Giordana Easy Liner for Lips in Coco Loco. This is a brown liner, a reddish brown liner that to be perfectly honest, the two of these together are one of my favorite lip combos of all time. But this is Jordana. Jordana hasn't been a thing for a while. It is time for her to go. She doesn't have a ton left. This is one of my favorite lip combos of all time. So this is how I have been enjoying using the both of these is together. And I am determined to get through it. 
by the end of the year. I actually, she doesn't have a whole lot left, so I don't think it's going to be long. Then I have two eyeliners to show you and a brow product. And this eyeliner is my Physician's Formula Eye Booster in the shade black. This is a brush tip eyeliner, which is my personal preference. I really, I stopped using this because I picked up one of the Stila Stale Day eyeliners in TJ Maxx. I found the dual ended one that I have been using. I've used it in a couple of projects, but I really, really loved the sharp tip on that Stay All Day liner. And so I kind of stopped using this, but I picked it up the other day. It's what I'm wearing today too. This is just a really nice liner and I have been, I've been working on it for a while. It's time for it to, to leave my collection. This is a really nice eyeliner. It is really nice. Significantly less expensive than the Stila at full price. I don't, I don't think I would buy the steel at full price because this one is just so good. I do feel like sometimes the brush tip can get a little funny. I've got one of the hairs is pointing backwards and it's got a little blunted at the tip, but it's still super easy to use. It's super black. I just, this is a good eyeliner. I had forgotten how good it was until I pulled it out just a few days ago. I've had this longer than you should have an eyeliner. We'll just leave it there, okay? It's still got good, good flow. It hasn't dried up. It hasn't gotten clogged. It's a good eyeliner. Uh, second eyeliner is this little nubbin here. How cute is she? Okay, this is my um, Rimmel uh, Scandalize. I think this is Scandalize, right? It's not an exaggerate. Yeah, Scandalize. The exaggerate is the retractable one, I believe. This is a Scandalize pencil in the shade black. I tend not to use this one because after, <laughs> after I uh, used it this far, basically, I picked up the NYX retractable liner. It's just easier because I don't have to sharpen it. But we're gonna finish her. I don't know exactly where, where, uh, where these pencils stop. I guess we will find out, but we're gonna use the whole thing. Last, I believe this is the last thing. I'll, I'll count, I'll count to make sure I'm correct, but this is my Milk Kush Fiber Brow Gel. I got it in a BoxyCharm some time ago. And uh, this is in the shade Cypher, which is their black shade. Now, when I first got this, it was too wet for me to use. I could not use it. It was similar to the problem that I had with the NYX Fill and Fluff. Because I have such a dark shade, I need it to deposit very little product on my skin. Otherwise, things get out of control pretty quickly. So I set it aside and I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to ever use that. But once it started to dry up, I, it was much more useful. I don't need something to fluff up my eyebrows. I've got plenty of eyebrow hair. I don't need something that's going to give me a lot of hold. They're pretty well behaved eyebrows. They, they stay pretty much where I ask them to stay. Um, but I use this specifically for the tint. I find it useful. So I don't know if I can actually ever really consider this an empty necessarily. At some point, I'm just going to stop being able to get product out of it. It's kind of like a mascara. I don't know that I ever really completely use all of the product in mascara if it just dries up, you know what I'm saying? And then I need to move on. However, I would like to use this as much as possible before it needs to leave my collection. Let me count really quick and make sure those are all of our products. Okay, we got them all. Uh, those are the 24 products I am hoping to have finished by the end of 2024. I can already tell this uh, video is three zillion years long. <laughs> It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a lot to edit. So I'm not gonna get into my stretch goals today, but I will pop back in here next month with another update. Again, I'm not treating this as a separate project, uh, so I don't intend to update you often on how this is all going and you will see these products pop up in my empties as I complete them. However, I will pop back in next month most likely. I'll show you anything that I have finished between now and then and the products from my stretch goals that I will be rolling in to replace those things that I have completed. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I will see you in the next one. Bye.